Thanks for choosing us. Now, the governing New Patriotic Party will later today officially outdoor Dr. Matteo Pogopempe as running mate to its flag bearer, Dr. Mahmoud This is after the National Executive Committee of the party had endorsed his nomination by Dr. Bamia. Ahead of that, the latest Global Info Analytics survey shows that Dr. Matteo Pogopempe is loved more in his home region, Ashanti region, than in the greater Accra region. Let's run you through the salient pointers now. It's coming on your screen, Dev. Now, it says that the Global Info Analytics Survey, Dr. Maltio Proko Prempe, as MPP running mate. Now, it starts from the Ashanti region, where Dr. Maltio Proko Prempe has the highest favorability rating, 60% when compared to Dr. Osei Educhum. Kennedy Japong and Prof. Sao Poku Oina. Now, in the greater Accra region, Dr. Machio Proku Pempe um, appears to be unpopular when compared to Kennedy Japon. And we'll get into the details because we have a member of the team here in the studio. Now, let's move on to the next slide. Now, Dr. Machio Proku Pempe's net favorability rating in the region is ele minus 11%, while that of Kennedy Japan is at plus 3%. Now, we'll get into the dynamics shortly. The poll also shows that, um, the polls also show that 75% of Ashanti voters approve of the nomination of Dr. Macho Boku Prempe. But there's a problem. 22% disapprove. 3%, well, they don't have an opinion. Now, 62% of MPP supporters in the Ashanti region say they voted for the party because of Dr. Matteo Proko Prempe, meaning it shows his influence in that region, in that region. The key reason why the NPP is going to be unveiling him in the Ashanti region later today. Now, only 24% of NPP supporters in the Greater Accra region say they'll vote because of Dr. Matteo Proko Prempe. And that's where the problem is, because he appears to be quite popular in the NPP stronghold, which is the Ashanti region, but in the Greater Accra region, he's not so popular. Now, on the question of whether Dr. Matteo Proko Prempe is the best candidate to help the NPP break the eight, only 60% said yes, 28% said no, and 12 did not have an opinion. So we'll get into the, the, the dynamics later on in the show and get to understand the details of this. Well, as the former education minister is taking on, um, we'll get into that details, his new role as running mate for New Patriotic Party, students who benefited from his hallmark free senior high school policy have been sharing their experiences, shedding light on both its successes and challenges. We'll get into that shortly, but let's look at the profile of Dr. Matteo Poco Prempe. Who is this man? And why is he the talk of town as we speak? Watch this. Mahmoud Bamiya looks better than John Dramani Mahama. From all, all economic history and everything, um, um, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya stands head and shoulders over John Dramani Mahama. Huh? So 2024 is a done deal for the MPP? 2024 will be a done deal for MPP. Born and bred in Menshia Apedefie in Kumase, young Nanapoku attended Prempe College for his O and A level before pursuing further studies at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, where he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Human Biology. Before delving into active politics, he practiced as a medical doctor demonstrating commitment to healthcare provision. Dr. Opoku Prempe, popularly known as Napo, was first elected to Parliament in 2008 to represent the Mensha constituency and later Mensha South holding on to the seat till now. Nana Kwabna Mensa is a pejefi asafuhini na post royal family. Napo a pejefi ya ni pepefi ya tete no mani nyini ha ni school kum ni bribia pejefi no tia kwa pimse 
Nyame Boye, or graduate in the school, Bibia, Bonny Doctorate degree, and here I know call medicine or tech. And Sana, or call abrutri. The Akotefia is his father's home, where he was born and lived throughout his days in busy school to the university, even before moving to study abroad. He has been a calm and humble child since childhood. He was focused on school and studies. He has always been indoors studying and he took everything seriously. He is a prince because he was born to a king. According to Nana Kwabena Mensa, Dr. Opoku Prempe's confirmation as Dr. Baumia's running mate has brought joy to the family. His aim is to be a politician and move to greater heights, and the family has always embraced this decision with prayers. For us, we are happy about the selection as running meat to Dr. Baumia. We are praying for God's protection. This is an exciting news. NPP, I'm a new running meat. I'm a senior number five. I'm saying. Hey, the the impaibo etanechi. Yesterday, na na num samamfo impai sunsum ni bribia etanechi. Na unya wadi on na na montium. The Ashanti region has become critical to the MPP's success in the December polls due to its large voting population. The party believes its chances in the region is bolstered by the selection of Dr. Opoku Prempe as running mate. Naming Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe as running mate also solidifies the MPP's connections with key demographics within the area, potentially swaying votes in the party's favor come December. I think you have to compare your mama with Nanado, not Baumia. But we are looking at the, both of them coming up against each other in the December seventh general elections. If you can only comp, you can only compare John Dramani Mahama and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia as vice president because both of them have occupied that position as vice president. And I think uh, the comparison is tilted in the favor of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. However, critics argue the choice of Dr. Matthew Pukupempe may not not satisfy demands for equitable representation across regions. For Joy News, my name is Nana Bwachi Danku Yadom Kumasi. Are you ready to wear your flags? Are you ready? Well, later in the bulletin, we'll take you to Kumasi where the official unveiling of Dr. Marcia Proko Prempe is ongoing today. But let's have a conversation with Musa Dankwa. He's executive director of Global Info Analytics, and he joins me in the studio with more. Thank you for your time here on Newstex. Thank you very much. Well, I also have Malik ben, uh, Basintali. He's deputy national communications officer of the NDC. And later in the bulletin, Dennis Miracle Sapwaji, director of communication for Dr. Balmia's campaign team, will be joining the conversation. But let's get into this data and look at the favorability ratings of Dr. Martio Pokupempe in the Ashanti region. First of all, what was the sample size for this data collection? Right. Thank you very much for having me. For Ashanti region, we sampled about 1,300 voters mm. from about uh, 16 constituencies in the region. Yes. Mm. And uh, in the Greater Accra, 
it was in excess of uh, 3,000. Mm. Let's look at the data collected. Mm. Dr. Marcio Proko Prempes, 60% favorability in the Ashanti region. And you have other people there, Honorable Kennedy Japon, 55%, very close marking. We have Dr. Osei Duchum and Professor Poko Oina all getting 43%. Let's look at what the data says. Let's break down the dynamics. We start from the Ashanti region. Right. What did you find? It is very clear that in Ashanti region, um, most of the uh, voters prefer um, Matthew Pukuprempa. Mm. If you look at the favorability rating, he is plus 60% in that region, followed closely by Canada Japan with plus 55%. Mm. Educhum and Professor Pukunina are uh, tied on 43%. So clearly, in the Ashanti region, there's no doubt about who uh, they prefer to lead, uh, to become the running mate for uh, Baumia in the Ashanti region. Mm. But when we come to Greater Accra, where the, that's where the story changes a bit. In Greater Accra, uh, uh, Dr. Matthew Prempe is minus 11 percent negative, I mean, negative approval rate, you know, mm. probability rating. And then Kennedy is on plus 3 percent. So what we can say is that from the data, it is clear that whereas Matthew will be uh, a positive for MPP in the Shanti region, in Greater Accra, it, it will be a negative. Mm. And that is quite key moving yes. forward because we have just a few months to the general election. Yeah. It means that with the locals in the Ashanti region, no doubt about it, mm -hmm. Dr. Macho Pogo Prempe is the man they are going for. But then he has a daunting tax to prove to people in the Greater Akka region that he's the man for the job. Let's look at other key findings. Now, the approval of his nomination in the Ashanti region, 75%. That's overwhelming. But then we have a portion, 22% disapprove. Tell us more about this data. Yeah, I mean, this data is across all demographic, mm -hmm. both MPP, NDC, floating voters, other parties, as well as those who don't disclose their party affiliation to us. So at the broader level, he's doing uh, 75%, and 22% said, no, they don't support it. This would include NDC people as well. Mm. So you shouldn't be worried too much about... About the... Okay. Exactly. But if the, if, if the objective is to appease to the base, then it's important you look at how the MPP voters perceive the nomination. That's where you see about 89% of them say they support the, uh, the nomination, which means that within the base, he's achieving the reason why he's being nominated to, to, uh, to that position. So on that score, he's doing very well. But maybe across other areas that you can see some vulnerability. Mm. Let's look at the influence on voting's behavior because we're looking at the Ashanti region now, mm. for example, where your survey also covered how his nomination as running mate would influence the voting pattern. Tell us more about it. No, when we ask them, now that he's been nominated, how likely is that nomination going to influence uh, you to vote for the MPP in the December election? At that point, the number reduces to 62%. Mm. So only 60% said they would vote for MPP in the region because of that nomination. And then you have about 21% saying that, no, it, would, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't influence them. And then about 17% said they are kind of neutral about whether it will have impact. Are we maintaining it. the same sample size? And the same sample size, mm. same sample size. So you can see that the response to approval isn't the same as response to, are you likely to vote for him? And then there will be another triangulation question mm. where you ask them, okay, now who would you vote for? then you see the, 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 the actual behavior of voters in that region. Let's look at the voters' perception of who um, Dr. Marcio Poco Prempe is and if he is indeed the right candidate for Dr. Balmier as they move into the December election. What did your survey find? You know, on, on broader issues mm. in Ashanti region, I think he's okay. Um, he's perceived positively across the areas we sampled mm. within the margin of error. And uh, we believe that that will still hold. Now, what we may have to find out is subsequent to this poll in the coming months, how will the numbers move? Will they move positively or will they move negatively or it will stay stable? That we are yet to, 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 to know uh, and we'll be able to, to find out about that maybe in the coming months. But broadly speaking, in the Ashanti region, they kind of agree and okay with that nomination. Mm. The other issue is what will be the impact of that nomination on the actual vote for MPP in the Ashanti region, 
compared to what they got in 2020. Mm. And whether his nomination would influence people who said they will not vote to now come out to vote. That would be the key measure of his success. Let's look at the hypothetical voting outcome in the Ashanti region. If today we had an election, you also asked the sample size what their voting pattern would be. Would it be for the NDC, the NPP, the Alan Kojo Tremanting, who is leading a new movement? What did your survey find? Now, when we posed the question to them that if the elections were held today, who would you vote for? Then you have 15% of the respondents saying that they would vote for John Mahama in the Ashanti region. Then you have 73% of, uh, of voters across board mm -hmm. say they would vote for the MPP. Then you have 9% voting for Alan Chiramatin and 2% voting for Nana Kwame Bediakum. Now you could see that in this particular poll, the NDC has reduced to 15%. Mm. That's quite some drop. But what has happened to the numbers? You could see that Alan is benefiting from, from the numbers. From numbers. So the, the concern well. that is actually going to influence the upcoming election is legitimate. Yes. Because yes. he has strong um, following and backing in the Ashanti. Absolutely. Region. Absolutely. I mean, you, if you look at Alan's support, uh, oh, nearly half of his support mm -hmm. comes from Ashanti region. If you can see national polling numbers. And another 20% or more comes from the Eastern region. I mean, he is doing well where MPP is supposed to be dominating. Mm. And that is the biggest problem or challenge facing MPP right now. Because in the Eastern region, they are looking at Bediaku and Alan, as well as Baumia. And then in the Ashanti region, it is uh, Baumia, Alan, and Bediaku, again, drawing votes. Because if you look at Ashanti numbers, if you add Muhammad's 15%, to Alan, 29% uh, and the number of 2%. Um, 11 plus 26, uh, 36% 30, of the vote. Even though it didn't go to Muhammad, mm. it has gone to opposing candidate, which means that Muhammad doesn't need to go to 25% or 30%. Mm. The others are doing the job for him. And that is the problem for MPP in the Shanti region. A problem that we will be getting Malik to tell us how they plan to work it out. But let's go back into the methodology and the approach you use in getting this data. Did it cover other regions apart from the two major regions, the Greater Accra and the Ashanti region? No, we focus this time around. Mm. It's a special poll. So we only focus on Ashanti region because of the role it's going to play, mm. according to commentators. So we have to focus our, our microscope on the um, um, Ashanti region. And also in Greater Accra, because look, nearly 7.4 million or 8 million voters mm. are from Accra and Ashanti region. Mm. And Ashanti region contributes about 25% of MPP followers. And Accra, about 20% of MPP followers. So these two blocks are very uh, strong regions you cannot joke with. So we wanted to see the implication of this nomination in their stronghold, followed by the uh, Greater Accra, which is the second stronghold of MPP. Mm. So it is valid that we focused our uh, attention in these two areas and mostly because we haven't got the resources to go everywhere in that short period of time. Well, I'm sure you'll be getting us more data but let me bring in Malik, his Deputy National Communications Officer of the NDC. Thank you for your time here on Newstex. Now we start with the <coughs> current study released by Info Analytics. Key concern that this study raised is about the voters parting should we hold an election today? I'll just run it by you briefly, if you just tuned in. Um, it says that the, the perception of Dr. Matthew Pogopempe as best candidate in the Ashanti region, 60% believe that he's the best candidate to help the NPP break the eight. 28% disagree, 12% no opinion. Now, when it came to the voting outcomes, should election be held today? The survey said that 73% would have voted for Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya in the Ashanti region, and then 15% for John Dramani Mahama in the Ashanti region. It shows that you appear to be losing more grounds in the Ashanti region. Tell us how the party plans to turn their fortunes. Well, first of all, good morning, and good morning to your viewers. 
um, politics has and has always been scientific. And as we all know, science is based on data. We go out there, we call it data, we put data together, and we are able to process it into very meaningful information. And then we transmit whatever data has been gotten, and then we put it across. That is all what politics is about. Just as politics is about human beings going to the polls to make a decision, I mean, they could equally make a decision to whatever research is being done on them. There are people who have already taken a decision on who they are going to vote for before the 7th of December. And in fact, very few people get to the polls before taking a decision. Many people take a decision one, two years or way ahead before the election time. And so we in the NDC welcome to research works, and that is why we have a research department to put us on track and always guide us in whatever we are doing. So let me commend uh, Mr. Musa Dankwa for the very good job. And also to plead that, look, at no point in time should he get swayed away by any political party, be it my own political party, NDC, be it MPP, be it any political party, because I have seen posters in this country start very good like he started, and then at a point they got swayed away into bringing very biased reports. I mean, I always accept this report simply because it favors me. But I would accept it in one way or the other because I have gone through the report and in one way or the other it kind of uh, fits in uh, what we have been doing at our personal level. What is happening in the Ashanti region is not a loss to the NDC and it will never be a loss to the NDC. If you ask Mr. Musa Dampa there, he will tell you that he's followed the election for quite some time now, and you tell you that, look, at your entry, Napo, this is the first time Napo is, is getting on the ballot paper. I mean, even though his face will not be on it, he's going to pay him on to the, the man whose face is going to be on the ballot paper. And if you are starting a contest with, with about 60% of people feeling that you are the best candidate for their party, then <laughs> it, is, it is meaning. I mean, nobody starts the race with 60%, especially so when you are a new candidate. And so we think that, look, um, it's a loss for the MPP, and it's a big loss for, for the ticket of Matopoku Prempe and Alaji Baumia. I mean, the days of people voting simply because you emerge from their constituency or simply because you come from their area or simply because you belong to the same tribe with them are gradually fading off because people are becoming discerning and people think that, look, if we continue to vote for you and you don't miss us halfway or you don't oblige to the social contract that was undertaken before the election simply because you feel you are one of us and you come from here, then we beg you, you being an Ashante does not put bread and tea on my table in the morning or you being an Ashante does not aid me in any way to give my wife chop money in the morning. So we are gradually moving away from that era where people say you are an Ashanti, so we we'll vote for you because you are Ashanti. You have been an Ashanti since. Napo was an Ashanti when he was education minister. What did he do in the education sector in the, in the Ashanti region? He should point to one single school, one, one school he took to the Ashanti region. Point to one university, just one, he took to the Ashanti region. In other words, when teacher trainees and nursing trainees were not being paid the allowances, there were Ashanti that were not also being paid. Or what? When uh, very uh, acute policies like the three shift system was being introduced under the free education system or the senior high school system, it affected the people of the Ashanti region. I know Ashanti who kept on crying. Look, uh, Napo, you are education minister. Please set up and bring policies to the Ashanti region. Let us remember you for something you've done for us because you are an Ashanti. We couldn't do anything. In fact, when he became energy minister, that was when the Ashanti region actually even demonstrated against Dumso, if you remember, in 2021. And in fact, it was the same 2021 that he in Napo's overlord in the Ashanti region, the Otu forces to the second, actually cried that his home appliances were being damaged by Dumso and what have you. It was under the era of same Napo. So the mere fact that you are an Ashanti and you made energy minister did not resolve the crisis we imposed on us. In fact, you actually introduce the crisis on us. And you can go through the record. So the good people of the Ashanti region 
saying that, look, if you've not been able to do anything for us, even as your days as, as education minister, if you're not able to do anything for us, even at your days of being an energy minister, then we don't think you can do anything for us, even if you become an enemy. Now, go to the report. Um, Naport constituency, that is the Menshia South. Mm. Even in Menshia South, 84% of people, only 84% of people feel Napo is the best candidate. 11% of people don't think so. Add 11% to the 5% that had no opinion. It simply means that 16% of people still think that they are MP. They are current MP. Who may be former, who will be former MP, I mean, in a few uh, weeks' time, of course, to go and sit in the house and not to become running or vice president. That is not best fit to be vice president of this country. And I think that's a big blow to them, that your own constituency you have said, you could not even chalk a 90% mark in your own constituency. I think it's, it's a vote of no confidence on the poor. And I, I simply think that, look, there are many things he's done wrong in this country. That ticket is a bad one. That ticket has virtually crashed. And we in the end just think that even the MPP, Star Wars, know it was a bad choice. I listen who was H. A. Mensa Bonsu, who was giving attributes of persons who could have best fit, who could have been best fit as running mates. And he felt that Napo was, was a wrong choice. I listened to the MP for Google. That's the thing, I've forgotten the name of the concert. Apia mm. Kubi, and the Apia Kubi, who, who spoke, a high ranking member in the MPP. And he thinks that Napo was a bad choice. Napo does, that has to, I mean, is virtually arrogant. Napo cannot bring the team together. And Napo is, is a wrong choice for their own party. So their party members have passed a vote of no confidence on Napo. And we in the end we should think that look, it doesn't deter us. Look, the people of Atomsu will continue to reward the NDC for giving them a market. The people of Kumase will continue to remember John Mahama for giving them a KJC a market. The people of Tapo will continue to thank President Mahama for giving them a market. The people of Siwa will continue to thank President Mahama for giving them mm. the Siwa hospital. The people of Afari who continue to thank President Mahama for giving them their fire military hospital. The people of Formula who thank President Mahama for giving them a Formula hospital. The people of Bekwai who thank President Mahama for giving them a Bekwai hospital. The people of Asawafe who thank President Mahama for giving them good roads under his era. If you remember in recent times, even chiefs who were pleading on Anado to give them roads, he virtually insulted them and told them, I mean, if they could create their own roads, they should go and create the Kenyan civil roads were done by President Mahama. Uh, the Tafu roads were done by President Mama. Community day schools. Okay. I mean, the people of uh, the people mm. of Kobana, Kwakum, in Obuase, we thank President Mama for giving them a community day school. But some people you know, we thank President Mama for giving them a community day school. These are projects, and yeah. these are Let me let me come in at this point, uh, Malik. Of, uh, I'll land on this. These are mm. projects, and these are things that have benefited the people of the Ashanti region. Now, Swami Magazine, who were there. When the people told us they could no longer clear goods under their own government, the government they brought to power. And, mm. and they felt sad that even when Baumia came on his campaign tour, he couldn't profess a single solution. So all I'm saying is that politics is scientific, yes. Politics has to do with bread and butter issues. I always rely on that. And the people of the Ashanti region and the entire country are becoming discerning and will not settle for one because you say you are from here. If you are from here, what do you do for us? That is the question. Let's look at the favorability rates of the greater Accra region as we wrap up with you, Malik. Um, Dr. Mm. Martio Proko Prempe appears to not be that favorable amongst the voters in the greater Accra region. Um, what's your thoughts about it as the NDC? Yes, Accra is the capital city. Mm. Uh, Accra is, 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 is a place where all manner of persons have come uh, in virtually commit. Accra is a place where all manner of persons I mean, have it is. And people move all the way to the capital city in search of greener pastures. Anything that happens anywhere in this country begins from Accra, including commodities. Before mm. anything enters the country, it has to pass through the capital. And to recent where we had a harbor uh, in Tafra Day, virtually everything passed through Accra. So we are first to feel the pain, and we are first to feel the hardships that being bestowed upon us as a Ghanaian people. And the people of Accra, like I said, those days when you take a truck truck from Medina to Accra, you used to pay virtually two Ghana cities, one city, 50 pesos. Today, the price of dropping under the NDC, that used to be 15 cities, is virtually the price of truck truck from Medina to Accra. And people wake up every morning and they pay these sums of money. 
salaries have been stagnated, yet cost of living continues to grow. And it grows under this current administration. So obviously, I'm not surprised mm. that the people of Greater Accra have already passed a verdict from the MPP. I'm not surprised that they have determined that mm. they will no longer give this clueless, incompetent, and insensitive government an opportunity. And they have felt the pain of Napo, they have felt the pain of Alaji Baumia. In fact, mm, even till you. now, if you've not been able to profess a single solution to us, you go about asking graduates to give you the spear. If we don't have jobs to do, how do we buy an spear for you to play with? So you must give us jobs first. And then when we get jobs, we can buy a toy spear for you to continue playing. But I mean, to land on this, um, President Mahama has been speaking. He met you generally the last time. Hmm. Malik, we have to come in at this point. We are losing you. Um, we're just giving a breakdown of some of the key data. Let me wrap up in the studio. Looking at the data collected, what would, how would this influence the upcoming general elections? I think they've made a decision to appoint Napo. Mm -hmm. Ashanti region will be okay in terms of uh, what they expect, but they have to be circumspect in where and how they deploy him across the country. If you bring him to Accra, what issues do you want him to talk about? Uh, how do you repackage him so that the people in Accra would accept him? More importantly, the people in MPP stronghold. These Accra views are coming from MPP stronghold. Mm. So if this data is expanded across the region, it could be worse. So they have to be very careful in how they, they deploy him. Um, in the recent time, some of the comments he made has not helped him. With regards to doom, so I think people have framed some opinion about him and they need to work hard to uh, dissuade that opinion about him and then see how best they can utilize him to uh, mobilize the base and gain more votes. Mm. Thank you so much for your time here. Now, the New Patriotic Party has begun nominations for the Mansion South parliamentary seat vacated by the outgoing member of parliament, Dr. Marto Poko Pempem. Now, following his confirmation as running mate to Dr. Palmi, and now his potential successes include his brother, Nano Uzu Prempe. We'll get into that shortly because the party intends to close nomination today to fasten the election process scheduled for Sunday. Today is also the official unveiling of Dr. Macho Poku Prempe and Nana Wachi Adam joins us live from Mensha with further details. Nana, what's the mood in the area? Before the New Patriotic Party and its sympathizers, as today happens to be the day that they are unveiling the NPP's running mate, Dr. Matthew Poko Prempe, at the Kumasi Jubilee Park. Well, the, for the first, it would be the presentation of Dr. Matthew Poko Prempe um, to the Asante at exactly 1 p.m. here at the Menshia Palace. And so, where I am currently is the Menshia South constituency, and then we are in front of the Menshia Palace. Well, this constituency is the constituency of the Asante in Rotom force it to the second. This is where the Asantini would cast his vote any time it's an election period. And so this constituency happens to be um, an important constituency for the new patriotic party. Well, when the party did confirm Dr. Matthew Poko Prempe as its um, running mate, the new patriotic party started its process of making sure that it begins an electoral um, process or procedure to have somebody succeed Dr. Matthew Poko Prempe. And so yesterday the new patriotic party's elections committee to hear the Mensha South constituency did open nominations and then at the close of the day five people had, filed, had picked up their nomination forms and then today they expected to file their nomination well while we wait for these aspirants to file their nominations we are also expecting the party faithfuls and people who do matter in the new patriotic party to be here at the Mensha Palace as we um, await the flag bearer and then his running mate to be inside the palace to have an engagement with the Asante Hine or two four say to the second someone would ask why it is important for the new patriotic party to present dr matthew poko prempe to the asante well it is important because dr matthew poko prempe is from the apejafi and the apejafi has a connection with the mensha palace the ashanti kingdom at large and so dr matthew poko prempe from the pechi from, from pechi has some connection with the mensha palace and he has a connection a tight one with the apejafi he's known to be a royal and so it is important for the new patriotic party to present him to the asante to the 
second. And so the other Menshia Palace or Menshia South constituency, we've seen a number of party executives come into the palace as we await the flag bearer and his running mate, Dr. Matthew Pokupempe, to be inside the palace to have an engagement with the Asante. We'll bring to you up to speed details with regards to whatever that would happen here in the Menshia South constituency. But then I have um, the NDC here with me, and then I would have the NPP's lawyer, John Dako. Lawyer John Dako would be speaking um, on behalf of the New Patriotic Party um, with regards to the preparation for the unveiling which is expected to happen at 2 p.m. at the Kumasi Jubilee Park. But then before that, um, I've already told you that we'll be having the presentation of Dr. Matthew Pokoprepa to the Asantehine at exactly 1 p.m. Lawyer. I know you are very good friends to Dr. Matthew Pokopempa. I've seen pictures of you. Um, today we are presenting him to the Asante Hine. What are expectations with regards to this, this former presentation of your animate to um, His Royal Majesty? Well, you know, um, he's the MP for the constituency and of course he's a royal. And so if he's been honored by this, um, then it is only right that uh, he's presented to the Asante Hine, who is the overlord of Asante uh, Kingdom. Uh, it means a lot um, that somebody from the royal house is going to partner Dr. Baumia to run for the election. And so the expectations are high. I'm expecting that the king will give uh, his blessing to uh, Napo and then bless the ticket. And hopefully without, um, our people can now go out, present the ticket and present the two of them to the people of uh, Ghana and Ashanti. Now, we, we, I would want to ask you, what is so important to the New Patriotic Party that made you settle on Dr. Matthew Pokopempe? Is it because of his royal background, his affiliation with the Ashanti region, or any other thing so special about him? No, I mean, I think that Dr. Baumia um, made it clear that he was not just looking for any person. He was looking for somebody who is competent enough. Remember, the vice president position is always a heartbeat away from the presidency. And there's somebody who you can trust. Uh, as a president, you select somebody who you believe that uh, can take over at any point in time when you are not available. And so you need to assess the person's uh, capabilities um, and effectiveness to run the nation. I believe that the good doctor, I mean Dr. Baumia, look at all these and settled on Dr. Baumia. Dr. Ba um, Dr. Mathepuku Pempe, he's a very important person in the Ashanti region, as we said. But politically, he's a consummate politician. Um, he appeals to the grassroots. Look, the election is about numbers. And so you're looking for somebody who can help you garner a lot of votes. Now, Dr. Matthew Puku Prempe brings that to the party. Ashanti region carries a lot of votes. He appeals to Ashanti region and a lot of the other regions, Eastern, uh, Bono, Western North, and, and Western region. And so his presence on the ticket is going to garner a lot of grassroots support. And that's what is going to help the party win. Now, winning the election is not enough. We win the election to govern a nation. And Dr. Baumia says that Dr. Maithopuku Prempe has the ability to also help him run the nation. Dr. Maithopuku Prempe uh, has run two of the biggest ministries in the country, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Energy. And, and his works there are there for all of us to see. The very good implementation of the free senior high school education and even that aside the construction of a lot of school uh, facilities uh, the implementation of the digitalization of our of our schools all these were done uh, under uh, dr matthew puku prepares uh, tenure as a minister for education when it comes to the ministry of energy uh, he's consolidated the ministry in such a way that now we are talking about consolidating our interest in in the oil industry, uh, the way the oil industry works is such that you don't only make money uh, from the flow of the oil, but from what you call the local content. His, his, his leadership in, in, in the oil and gas industry has helped grow a lot of local players. And so now there are a lot of, uh, you, you can say, maybe you may not call them oil titans, but a lot of young men who are into the oil industry because of the initiative that Dr. Matthew Puku Prempe brought to the uh, Ministry of Energy. So there are a lot of young men who are making a lot of money from that. And so his leadership in running the nation also um, helped Dr. Baumia to make that decision. And of course, as I said earlier on, you, the person who helped you, you win the election, that's a grassroots support. The person who helped you run the country, and we believe that Dr. Um, Matthew Puku Prempe has that. Now you should sit in a meeting with him to see how he runs his meeting. Very effective leader. 
And so he's seen all this. And of course, as I said, somebody who he trusts, somebody who he believes. You know, if you have a vice president who you cannot trust, you cannot sleep with your two eyes open. Uh, you cannot sleep with your two eyes. So you always have to sleep with one eye open. Dr. Um, Baumia has seen that he can trust Dr. Ba um, uh, Machopoku Pempe. And so that is why he chose him. And he believes that in his absence, in his absence, Matthew Opoku Prempe can take over for him. As I said, the vice presidency is always a hard bit away from the uh, presidency. So you choose somebody who you believe can take over from you when you are not there. And that's what he's done. And Ashanti region is happy. NPP grassroots is happy. And I believe a lot that uh, everybody in the country is happy. Today we are unveiling the great uh, uh, ticket uh, to the people of Ghana. And we are going to hit the ground running. We are going to tell Ghanaians what we've done. We're going to sell our message to the people of Ghana. And I believe the people of Ghana are going to listen to us and vote for us. Thank you so much. But uh, briefly, before I, I let you go, you are from the NDC. You are here while Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya is presented, Dr. Matthew Poko Pempe. From the NDC, why should you be here? Well, we came here because we were invited. We were invited. But Dr. Um, Matapoku's Prempe's nomination is born out of a mistake. You see, the MPP did a political suicide by announcing that they were going to Ashanti region to select their running mate. That in itself is undemocratic. It is indigenous, conservative. You can use all the words. That simply doesn't make sense. Who does that? That you are selecting a running mate, then you come publicly to tell the whole world that I'm going for the running mate from this region. You see, it narrows the debate. It is so unbiased, undemocratic. And once that was done, now they need to select from Ashanti region. The two candidates we are told who were the two leading candidates, Dr. Aduchum and Dr. Matipoku Prempe, Napo was able to hijack the party to present him to Dr. Alaji Mahmoud Baumia. So he's a running mate coming out of a mistake the party did by announcing to go for their running mate from just one region. Okay, so out of that mistake, here comes Napo. Now, now, now. We will settle, we'll settle yeah, on, now, the, on that now, argument. Now, but now. then I, I would have to wrap up for now and then I'll, I'll come back to you. Uh, so this is your election headquarters. Uh, we would still get to engage the NDC and the MPP. Where it is getting to is very critical for us. And so I hand over to you for Steve. While we are still here at the Mensha South constituency, awaiting Dr. Mahmoud Bamian and Dr. Matthew Pokupempe um, to get into the palace while they have um, an engagement with the Asante, the former introduction of his running meet to the Asante in Utun for to the second. Lawyer John Darko would, would be with me uh, for midday, so your election headquarters will bring to you up to speed details on that. Thank you. Over to you. Adam, now we are indeed your election headquarters. Later at 1 p.m., head of our political decks, Evan Smenza, would be in the studio with leading member of our political decks, Winston Amwa and Elton Brube, as well as head of our research decks, Raymond Aqua, to bring you the exclusive grand unveiling of Dr. Martio Proko Prempe. We are your election headquarters. We're taking a quick breather. We'll be back with business to stay tuned in. It's time for Business on Newsdeck. My name is Winston Taki, and now to our first business story. Associate Professor and founding head of the Department of Biomedical Engineering at the University of Ghana, Professor Elsie Ifakufman, is advocating for the strategic use of artificial intelligence to advance Ghana's educational system. She shared her views during an interview with Joy Business at the Africa AIED 2024 workshop in Accra. The Afrique AIED 2024 workshop focused on crowdsourcing and highlighted effort to build and deploy artificial intelligence in education systems across Africa. Associate Professor of the Department of Biomedical Engineering at the University of Ghana, Professor Elsie F. Kaufman, emphasized the strategic use of AI in education during the speech at the workshop. AI is a tool. It's a tool to help us do things easier, better, faster and very much like all the other technology tools we use in education, it is something that we should consider for what we do. However, because of the power of AI, it has made the work of the educator a little more difficult. That means we can't ask the same old questions we used to ask our learners. If you ask what is this, can easily be found using the AI. So we now have to be more creative in engaging with our students so that they use the AI as a tool rather than as a source of all answers. 
The Chief Operating Officer of Kwame AI, Victor Kumbo, expressed optimism about the potential of Africans to develop AI technologies. Our vision as um, Kwame AI is to empower learners um, with their own knowledge assistance, and um, especially in Africa where we realize that mostly technology isn't developed for us. And so the, the main focus and the reason for this conference is to get together um, researchers, educators, um, startups to start to think about how we can actually build education technology that works for Africans. So that, um, during this workshop, we, we actually ran a hackathon um, a month before the program, and we had uh, African students, like university students, building AI technology. So it's there's no, the time isn't coming. It actually is already. We have the minds here who can do it. It's just about um, giving them the exposure, giving them the support that they need to be able to put it out there for our use. The Greater Accra STEM coordinator with the Ghana Education Service, Betty Bois, shared insight on the importance of integrating AI into education. As a STEM coordinator, it's one of the tools that will be very helpful when it comes to education because uh, now we are having uh, issues of teacher employment, we financial economic challenges, uh, so many things running around and we know that using AI is one of the things that can cut short not to replace people anyway but to reduce the human contact. The Africa AID 2024 workshop brought together educators, researchers, entrepreneurs to discuss and collaborate on innovative ideas, best practices and future development in leveraging AI to enhance learning experiences and outcomes in Africa. Now moving on, the German government has affirmed its commitment to support developing countries like Ghana despite the harsh effect of the Russian-Ukraine conflict. That is according to the chair of the Committee of International Cooperation and Development at the German Parliament, Christoph Hoffmann. He spoke to Joy Business at a meeting with the Ghana Free Zones Authority as part of activities to mark the German parliamentarian's visit to Ghana. Here is more. It aims to deepen partnerships and assess the socio-economic impact of developmental projects funded by the German government. A six-member delegation from the German Parliament's Committee on International Cooperation and Development visited the country. One of the major highlights of their visit was a meeting with the Ghana Free Zones Authority. The meeting at the Tema Industrial Enclave discussed progress of German-funded projects in the industrial zone and prospective areas areas of investment. Ambassador Mike Okwe Jr. told the media that strengthening partnerships with development agencies will accelerate economic growth. At the moment, we are also working with um, whether it's GIZ, IFE, KFW to look at various areas of interest that would help in the developing of the Tema export processing zone. Uh, we know that the zone is full but we need to manage it better. But because it is full, uh, luckily we've been able to get 1,200 plus acres at Afsienya, which is just right across the road. And we are going to start that even on the very right note to make sure that uh, the mistakes that were made in the past will not be repeated. Dr. Christoph Hoffmann, a Liberal Party representative of the German Parliament and leader of the parliamentary delegation to Ghana, details plans by the German government to support Ghana's industrialization drive. There's always a lot of things we can improve. Um, and it's not only raw materials. We also want to have um, the, um, the next processing steps within Ghana and this is a good example here in the free trade zone where you don't, you don't sell raw materials, you sell products. This is more important because a lot more wealth is created by that sense and that's what we really want and I think this is what Ghana wants as well. So we're trying to create a win-win situation here as well. He explains the German government's intent to continuously support countries like Ghana despite the harsh effects of the Russia-Ukraine war on the European country. We have some budget problems as well. As you can see, we have a problem with high energy prices as the um, 
the, the, um, uh, the, the, the resources from Russia don't come anymore, which were fairly cheap to us, but now we have very expensive energy, and this is driving a lot of companies out of Germany, and we don't have so much subsidy like the US, so a lot of companies going to the US, and so we have some budget problems, and this will also um, have an effect on the development um, uh, budget what we have. As part of the activities of the delegation was a tour to selected factories in the Free Zones enclave and inspection of German funded projects. That'll be all for business here on Newsdex. My name is Winston Taki. We have more news for you after this break. Stay tuned. The same with us here on News Sex. Well, the police has declared seven individuals wanted in connection with an attack on the NPP office in Ayawa, so West Wagon. Stay with us at 12 p.m. when I come your way with JN today with details of that statement. Also, we know that the B6 examination enters day two. We got update for you at 12 p.m. My name is Fosina Safo. For more news, please log on to myjournline.com. Have a pleasant day as you enjoy the rest of our programs.